Hi Nat5, so this is from the Life and Earth unit, just taking you through the ecological terms that you need to be able to use, define and give if required. Okay, so to start off with, biodiversity. So every single biology word, if you look hard enough, you can break down into what they're looking for. So bio means life or living. Diversity means differences. So the biodiversity is all of the differences that you're going to find in a particular place. And that could be how many species have you got? It could be how many of each species you've got. So that's looking at a kind of population size. And then you can look even deeper and you can say, okay, what variation do you see inside each of the species? You can look at genetic diversity. So you can, you can look in quite a lot of detail for this one. You just need to know living differences. Okay. To describe it, some absolute basics. Habitat. Habitat basically means the place where something lives. And you quite often define an ecosystem, which we're just going to go into, uh, by the habitat. So you could be saying it's a field, it's a city, it's a mountain top, it's, it's the ocean, it's the deep ocean. You can be quite precise or you can be quite vague, but it's the place that something lives. Okay, for species, you're going to have to be very precise about its definition. It is a group of individuals that can interbreed to produce fertile offspring. So that means within a population, you have individuals that can produce offspring that then can go on to produce their own offspring. And the reason you have to be that precise is because you do have animals and plants where you have closely enough related, they're, they're closely enough that they can give one generation of offspring, but then that generation can't produce again. So what you get is some crosses that are unusual, and you may have heard of some of them. Generally, it goes male parent, female parent, um, but you get some quite cool ones. Uh, this is a zonkey. Here's a zorse. So obviously zebra and donkey, zebra and horse. Uh, here's a liger. Here's a tion. So lion and tiger, tion and tiger and lion. Um, and you have like jaggy lips and probably the most useful one that has been used an awful lot in for humans is a mule. A mule is a male donkey and a female horse bred together. You produce an infertile cross, the mule, but the mule is a very, very good pack animal and so um, has been used for a long time. Uh, you do get another way around and that's a hinny. So not expected to know these guys, but you are expected to know the definition for species. Definition for population is the number of individuals of one species in a habitat. It's just it. OK, so you'll have lots of different populations. Any species you can find there, you just count it. That's your population. The community is taking all of the populations, so all the living things and adding them up and saying this is the community for that habitat. On a large scale, we could say that every living thing on the planet is a community of the entire biosphere. OK, so looking at specific groups of organisms. A producer is something that can produce, make its own food. So really what we're talking about here is green plants. Anything green has the ability to take inorganic raw materials, so carbon dioxide, water um, and light energy collected or held by chlorophyll and producing, producing sugars. And Every single food chain, so any part of an, of an ecosystem where you're looking at where the food is coming from, it's got to start with a producer. So for you guys, green plants. Okay, and they could be tiny, we could be algae, um, all the way up to something big with big leaves. There are some very strange producers that have been found in hydrothermal vents deep down in the ocean, um, near volcanic um, activity, and they are actually able to produce their own food from other raw chemicals than, than the green plants. But you guys are going to go with green plants. Everything else is a consumer and the consumer is something that has to get its energy by feeding on something else. So it cannot make its own food. It has to feed on something else, take that food in and break it down. So anything that's not green. So our three that we're going to need to know are the herbivores, the carnivores and the omnivores. Herbivores. Just a straight definite, so vore is to eat, herb is a plant, so the consumer that gets its energy by feeding on plants. 
I'm fairly sure you can come up with many examples of greasers and things which just eat plants. Okay, so the carnivores, vor for eat and carn for meat, they are anything which gets its energy by feeding on animals. So anything you can think of that is your hunters, your predators that you know of. So you're looking for any of your birds of prey, any, any of your big cats, big dogs, with their massive carnassial teeth, which allow them to tear things. So an omnivore, vor meaning eat and omni meaning everything, will get its energy by feeding on plants and animals. So we have several examples here. You'll notice if you look at the human skull compared to the carnivore skull, we do have slightly pointy teeth, but they're only slightly pointy. If you compare our skull to a herbivore skull, the herbivore has a huge number of grinding teeth. We still have them there at the back, but again, they're smaller. So you've got a non-specialist, but able to do both by being kind of like everything. So to link up all of that, we have food chains. And by a food chain, what we're looking at is who is feeding on who. Now, you've got to be a little bit careful with this one. You don't say who eats who, because eating involves you using a digestive system like we have. So chewing and swallowing and all that. And not everything uses that. So we see feed, um, which is just to take in food. The arrows show where the energy is going. And that's, again, don't say who eats who. You say where the energy is going. So you're always going to start with a producer because that producer has to make the food to get you started. And then the energy moves into the consumers and then it moves up the chain. So the primary consumer is the first one to eat the producer. And then the secondary consumer eats the primary consumer. Sorry, being very careful, feeds on the primary consumer. So here would be a simple example. You start off with green. It's a producer making its own food from sunlight. The energy then goes to a field mouse. It is the primary consumer. It only eats plant materials. You could also say it's a herbivore. And then we have a fox, which is the secondary consumer because it's fed on the primary consumer. It's only eating animal materials, so it's a carnivore. The arrows show you where the energy is going, not who eats who. OK, so a food chain is all well and good, but it doesn't really show you what's actually going on because you don't just feed on one thing. There's a whole pile of interactions that are going on during the, the feeding relationships in, a, in an ecosystem. So what you want to look at really is a food web. And it shows you the connections between all of the food chains. So a food web is just a set of linked up food chains. And it still shows you the energy flow, but you might have more than one producer. You might have several producers. Um, you're going to have several different consumers. And depending on which food chain you pick them out of, you may have consumers that come out as primary and sometimes primary, sometimes secondary. It could be things like that. And what we should also try and put into a food web is the decomposers. Um, so a decomposer is something which is taking energy from uh, waste or dead material. And what you're often asked to do is to find out which animal feeds on which, uh, to identify it directly from the food web. You might be asked to add in links. You might be asked to predict what would happen if you remove a species. OK, so a food web, just as an example, we start off with some green plants and then we have a whole pile of primary consumers coming in here who are feeding on some of the green plants, whether that be the seeds, the leaves, other parts. Then secondary consumers. But you'll notice here that some of the primary consumers actually are secondary consumers as well, depending on which food chain you take to get to them. So our primary for secondary secondaries then are fed on by the tertiary. And that is your top consumer in this in this particular example. Overall, from every single level, you'll have decomposers that are consuming. So any waste, any dead stuff that's produced by any of these um, organisms will be decomposed by the decomposers. So you also might be asked to say, right, okay, what happens if I remove something? So for example, if um, if the fish were removed, what would happen to, to shrimp numbers? Right, well, if there's less fish, then the heron would maybe eat more shrimp, so the shrimp would go down. It's that kind of set of thinking you have to be able to do. Um, you could be asked to pull out a food web or food chain sorry from the food web so for example if you came up from the green plants and you said i'm going to go to the small bird and then up to the owl 
that's a food chain. But you also could have gone from from the uh, start, but this time gone to the the grasshopper and then to the bird and then to the owl. That's a different food chain. And so you might be asked for a four length or a three length. You just have to work your way through. And that's the main stuff for this particular key area, vocab wise.